Hey, it's Kevin from KDW Mixing and Mastering. This week I thought I'd show you how I use um, dual monitors in Cubase. Now, the recording that I'm doing is only going to show you one monitor, but I'm going to explain, and you'll have to use your imagination of how the second monitor is sitting. So in my setup, I have a monitor sitting on the desk, and then I have a second monitor above that. So not side by side, but one on top of the other. And generally what I'm doing is, so my bottom monitor is my primary monitor. That's where I'm generally working on. I obviously will move my mouse up to the other screen as well to do certain things, but it's more there for viewing and just quick tasks. But I'm primarily I'm usually working on the things on the bottom screen and the top screen is just for look. So how I manage my dual screens is by using workspaces. So this way I can quickly switch between functions and move my screens around. Now, if you have your setup like mine with the screens top to bottom, there's a couple of conditions to get this to work. One is, if you're gonna maximize your windows, it will not work if you have the menu sitting on the bottom screen. You need to drag this here menu up to the top screen and then you can maximize your windows and have them switch with workspaces. Alternatively, what you can do is what I've got here where you set up your workspaces to look like they're maximized, but they're not. They're just stretched, as you can see I've done that. I've stretched as close as I can and to make it look as neat as I can without actually maximizing because if you maximize these windows and have the menu bar on this bottom screen, your primary screen and not the secondary screen, when you go to activate workspaces, certain windows won't move. So you might find that the mix window will move to the second window but the project window will stay where it is or you'll end up with both windows on the same screen and they won't transition over. So what I'm referring to here is my, so my first view, okay, is what I call project view. And that is where my primary window has my project window. So I'm doing all my editing of the audio tracks, you know, within folders, etc., all of that sort of stuff. And then on my second window, which you can't obviously see because it's not recording, it contains the mix console. So I can see obviously my faders, I can see my levels, I can see my racks with my plugins in them, and I can reach up and obviously adjust those faders if I wish. But like I said, it's for quick, it mainly is for quick viewing. I'm mainly working on this screen here. So what I also do is, alongside creating these views, I also assign hotkeys. Now, I know Cubase comes with some default hotkeys, which I can't remember what they are, but I've reassigned mine to, uh, as you can see there, Alt-1. Uh, ignore that one there, that's just the test one that I'll show you in a minute. But you can create, I think you can create up to 9, because you can go up to Alt-9. I think you can create more workspaces, but you, you'd you have to change your structure of how you use your hotkeys from there. So I like to use the alt numbers, very easy for me to remember, very easy for me to just quickly uh, select. So that's my preference with those, so that's what I've set them to. And you know, as you probably would already know in your key commands, you can save your own list of keys so you can always go back to the default if you wish or if you've got somebody else that uses a computer and they want to default you can all have your own individual set of key commands so I save my own key commands here now that I'm in here having a look it looks like Cubase probably I just left these in because it didn't bother me had alt plus num one I have a tiny little keyboard that doesn't have a number pad and that's probably one of the main reasons I reassigned it. Plus, with the Alt 1, Alt 2, I can actually do that function with one hand. If I was doing Alt numpad, I would find it hard to do with one hand. I'd probably use two. And when I say one hand, 
I've got one, I've got my, I'm right-handed, and I've got my right hand on my mouse, and I can do the Alt-1, Alt-2s with my left hand. Now, if I had a numpad, it would be very awkward to use the Cubase function, so that's another reason I reassigned it, so I can use my left hand to just quickly move screens. Anyway, back on topic. So that's my first view is a project view. So as I said, on the top window, which you can't see, top monitor, I have my mix console. Now when I switch to my second view, which is the mix view, you will now see my mix console on my primary window. So now this is where I'm sitting here doing plugins, changing levels, adjusting all this sort of stuff that's sitting on my primary window. Okay, so this is what was appearing a moment ago on my top screen that you couldn't see. And it has now moved to my primary screen. And what you can't see now on my top screen is I have my project window, which was what you saw before on my previous view up there. So while I'm, so that way I'm doing my mixing on the mix console, but I can still see the project view and see where all the audio files are and quickly go up there and open a folder or make an adjustment. But again, primarily working on here. My next view, uh, and, and some of these views are going to change over time. I'm still working on this of how I, I would like to have it. Obviously, these first two, they're locked in. Uh, I use them all the time, constantly switching between those two views. But I set up another view, which is, as I called it, Mix Wave View. I was trialing using this at one stage to do an initial setup of a mix where I was not familiar with it and I just wanted to set all the levels. And what this view allowed me to do is I could quickly be sitting here and I could see the waveforms coming down. So I knew a track was about to play and I could start get ready to hit the fader and move it to a level I wanted. And the reason that I might do that is because a lot of the time I might start a project with all the faders down to infinity so that it doesn't blow my ears out when a mix starts. And then I just slowly bring up each mix, each fader as I go. And having this, this wave view here, I can quickly see when an audio track is coming down and about to start so I can do the uh, get ready to move the fader. Now obviously on and in this view I've also got the project window sitting on my top screen which again I can also still see where audio is because I'm looking at the project window. This is just something to play with it's an idea not sure if I'm going to continue to use it or not see how it goes. Another view which I'm also trialing out is what I'm calling production view. Now what that one is, is I have the project window on my main screen. So this is obviously for me when I'm creating music, whether it be electronic music or whatever else. So I'm not specifically mixing music, I'm actually creating it. I'm doing, you know, layering, putting extra instruments, all that sort of stuff. So on the primary window I have the project and on the second window up here I've actually got media bay open. Now again this is another one I'm playing with. I'm not sure how I'm going to use it or what it's going to do at this stage but I've just got media bay open so if I'm going through I want to go through some samples and drag them down here I can do that with it open on that window above. So the reason I have this prod test is so that I can show you by switching them around what is appearing on the top window so now I've switched this around this media bay is what was sitting on the top window in that other production view. Okay, so this is not one I necessarily use here. This was just a test just to show you. The other one is what I'm calling single all. So I guess this one's here is when I want to have just use one monitor. So if I wanted to use one monitor and not use the top one, I've got the top one turned off. Just when you use a single monitor, but I want everything to appear at once. So with this view here, you'll see here I've got the project window sitting here, just adjusted to fit. I've got a mix console underneath here, again, adjusted to fit under there. And I've got a separate window for the control room. 
So normally when you have your mix window, you might have the control room that's attached to it. I'm obviously not showing that. And I have actually opened the control room mixer separately there. And then I've placed that there. So I've positioned them all and then I've just updated or added and that's uh, set to Alt 6. So again, that's not used very often, but there might be times I don't want to have the second monitor on or I'm just doing something quick and I just want everything sitting there on the one screen and I could do that. Now, this might be a really nice setup to have if you had a laptop and you used your laptop in the studio and you need, you also go portable at times. So you might want to set up views here for your studio set up with two monitors and then also have like here where I've got single mix, I might have a single project and they're, they're the views that you use when you go portable and you've just got a laptop with one screen. So you can create pretty much any view you want. Some things don't work, you know, you have to play. Sometimes windows get stuck. You know, I tried with my production one to have the quantize panel open and some other stuff. Um, but for some reason, those panels just don't move. They stay where they are. They stay open the entire time. So if you open them, it doesn't matter what view you pick, that quantize panel will stay open forever. So there's certain limitations with the workspaces, but it's a matter of trying what your thoughts, what your thinking is, and seeing if you can get it to work. But like I said, if you're finding things don't work, just try not having them maximized, change the placement of them. I found the Media Bay one that I had before didn't work for some reason. If I put the Media Bay in a specific position of the screen, but if I put it straight in the middle of the screen, it worked fine. It was really weird. I don't understand it. So to actually set up one of these is pretty easy. So just arrange your windows the way you like it, get it all looking nice, and then just go into your workspaces and just go add a workspace. Give it a name. The other thing you can do is you can have them global. So global is obviously what I've got, which is where these will appear all the time on my list, no matter what the project is. But if you're working on a specific project and you just want a view just for that one project, you can create that view here. So you might have a project where you have a couple of MIDI instruments. So let's just stay with one here. And in that project, you always have this retro log sitting on the screen. So you could add that as a workspace to the project and call it retro. Okay, now to see how that sort of placed, if you go to organize, you'll see here, here's your global list. So I can, can rearrange, I can delete, I can rename if I double click on them. I can obviously click on them and they'll switch screens. But then down here is your project ones. So this is specific to this project. You see there, I just switched over and instantly retro log popped up. Popped up. So you might do that at project level. You can do it at a global level. So I've got my global ones there. I don't generally save any project ones, but that's just me. I, I use the same views regardless of the project. But you might work differently. You know, you might, like I said, you might have projects that you open these instruments automatically all the time. You know, and you can even do this globally if you wanted to. You know, you might always create songs with Retrolog. And you want Retrolog always to automatically pull up. So you have, a, you can have, again, a global one that's called Retro. And then it will appear here all the time. And every time you click on it, it will pull open Retro. Now, obviously, you'll have to have Retrolog instantiated into the project. Otherwise, it won't be able to pull it up. But it will attempt to do it. So that's pretty much all you need to do. And there's nothing more else to it. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a great feature. Especially if you've got dual monitors or, you know, you you can even have more than dual monitors. You can have triple monitors. You can have as many as you want and lay out all your little workspaces the way you want them and save them, create different views, and then just be able to switch between them uh, as you need them. So definitely have a look at it. Give it a go. If you've got any great ideas for layouts that you think that people might be interested in or, or I might be interested in, I'm always looking at better ways to improve my workflow and have things work more efficiently or you got any tips or tricks that I've missed that 
it can make this work smoother then um, yeah feel free to leave a comment and uh, let me know and uh, thanks for watching I'll see you next time